Hey, hey, good people. How you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all is well, and I hope your guitar journey is going famously. Welcome to Guitar Gab, where we talk about all things guitar, and I pull topics based on you. That's right. You get to choose what we talk about, what you want to learn about, what you want to uh, 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 know more about. Just put a comment in the YouTube uh, comment box below, tell me what you want to learn or what you want to talk more about or what you need more information on and that's where I pull content for these sessions. And this is part two of our DAW or Digital Audio Workstation uh, discussion where we have been talking about setting up uh, a, a home-based computer recording system or workstation. And uh, last in part one, be sure to watch that, we talked about the five components necessary to get started. We're keeping it very simple and we're focusing on making it sound the best possible sounds coming out of the speakers, which are because you want great sounds, good sounds that are motivating and empowering. Um, so we're focusing on those two things. So be sure and watch part one. And now this is part two where we are going to talk about how I hook everything up and how I get it running, how to set the ins and outs and, and many other things in, in my workstation. And this is my DAW right here. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a second, but I want to give a shout out and thank Thrasher1066 and R. Steve Young, because those gentlemen put the comments in a previous uh, previous uh, video, Guitar Gab, that they want to know how my DAW is set up, and they want to know uh, what are the basic components, how to use them, blah, blah, blah. So thanks, guys, for posting that. Again, more keep the feedback insights coming i will read them so before we talk about setting it all up remember the five basic components that you need to start home-based computer recording you need a computer you need a software program for recording is two good quality monitors three an audio interface that's four and cables to hook the whole thing up that's five you have those five things it's time to get rocking and rolling and creating the beautiful sounds. We talked also in the previous lesson about, you know, asking yourself, what do you want to do musically? Because that's going to drive the decision of the features of what what components you're going to buy, right? Do you just want to make beats? Do you just want to make jam tracks? Or are you a singer-songwriter who needs to record vocals and acoustic guitar? Or do you, do you just want to record uh, uh, bass guitar and electric guitar? So those um, those answers to those questions will drive the decisions on many of your purchases for your DAW. And now the task is how to get it hooked up, how to get it sounding good, how to get it up and running. Um, a couple things. Uh, first thing is on your interface, you're going to be going from the interface into your computer. And so you're going to hook that up. Most of the interfaces come with a USB cable or firewire. So you're going to run that right into the back of your computer. Um, most USB, uh, when you're buying your audio equipment, whether it be your interface or your software, like I mentioned before, just be sure to read the side of the box, the minimum system requirements, right? Because you want to make sure that your devices that you're buying are compatible uh, or the programs that you're buying are compatible with the, with the computer that you have or with the other components that you have. Very important to do that. Don't skip that, right? Otherwise, you run into problems with incompatibility and latency and things like that that's just going to make this experience frustrating and we want it to be as frustration free and empowering as possible okay so uh speaker placement very very important uh for your monitors uh, i see a lot of people who, who are with their daws remember daw digital audio workstation that's your system all your components and they have their speakers like down on 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 the actual desk um, you want to get your speakers, they ideally should be about at ear level, okay? And also, you want to have them in a configuration of a triangle. If you notice, do you see my two speakers here? Right across the back end, and I'm right in front of it. So you have this triangle effect where the speakers are at ear height, and you have this perfect workstation triangle. And ideally, that's what you want to shoot for. They make all kinds of different speaker stands of all different heights and sizes and you want to custom it to what works for you um, the other thing is these are sitting on the stands but they're on little uh, rubber feet uh, because you don't necessarily want that sound to transfer like if you just stick them on top of a metal something that sounds going to transfer down the stand onto the desk you want to kind of have them isolated 
That's why in a lot of studios, you'll, you'll see them a lot hanging from the ceiling, right? Projecting down it. And, and they give you that really, again, with those speakers, you want that, you know, that, that transparency. You want them to not be colored. You want them to, to be that true representation of what you're creating. So I like powered monitors also. So you're going to need to just plug those into standard power outlets. And, uh, and then those will be ready to go. Now, the way that I hook up my interface and my computer is I run the in and the out through the interface. I think it sounds the best that way. So what you want to do is you want to go from your balanced outs on the interface to your speakers. Okay. And uh, you could do that. Uh, a lot of the speakers will have balanced outs, XLRs, quarter inches, uh, one of those. And, and then you want to go uh, from your interface, uh, USB, into the computer. And I'll show you in a second, you're going to set your in and out in your software to go through the interface. Now, this whole thing about balanced versus unbalanced, uh, I think it's important. Uh, balanced basically means that the cable has three wires. Three. Two for the signal and one for ground. So if you look at like at an XLR cable, you could see the three of them. Or if it's a quarter inch cable, it has balanced ones have tip ring sleeve, TRS cables. That's three wires in there. And I think it's a better way to go than the two because with the balanced, you have less likelihood for airborne noise to creep in. And also you could run your cables longer and they sound a little better uh, in my opinion. So I think it's a good idea to use balanced. Now, all of the pieces have to be balanced in your system. If you have one that's unbalanced, it, it, it makes it unbalanced. Everything needs to be balanced cables. Um, you might be saying to yourself, self, I have an eighth inch jack out of the back of my Mac or my PC. Why don't I just run that into an adapter and then I'll run that into my uh, speakers, right? That'll work. <laughs> Really, while it may work, it's certainly not going to sound the best because your eighth inch jacks running out of your computers are not balanced, number one. And number two, when you start splitting the signal, it's starting to introduce all kinds of other issues which might degrade the signal or add, you'll be getting hiss and other noise. So again, we're, we're, we're keeping this simple and there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is just the way that I found works best for me and for my students. Um, so used balanced uh, the three wire cables and obviously you need to have an interface with balanced outs and you need to have your monitors which most decent monitors are going to have a, a balanced quarter inch or, or XLRs. So you need to tell your software, your recording program, where to pull the in and the out, where to send the out. You know, uh, so what you do, and I'm showing you this in Logic 10, um, there's a close up of it, and any software will have something similar to this where you go into the probably your first item on the taskbar up on the top left, and then you just go, this is Logic X, and you go to Preferences. Then you go over to prefer from Preferences and you go to General. Okay. So you have your preferences tag, and what we want to go to is audio. Audio, and this will set the audio preferences. You get another drop-down box, okay, and see right here, it says output device and input device. And most software packages will have this. I have it set to Steinberg UR22. A lot of times the program will, it will fill that field up. It will, it will be able to tell, hey, this has an interface that's already attached, and it will put that in there. Um, sometimes it might be on built-in output or a system setting. I want it on Steinberg. So I'm setting the output. The sound is going to go through my interface, through the Steinberg, and then out the Steinberg to the powered monitors. Input, what's coming in uh, from my guitar to the, St uh, to the Steinberg. I don't want it on the built-in microphone or the setting. I want it on the Steinberg because through my interface, that's where the signal is coming in. So I just set my in and out to my interface. It's Logic X or Logic 10. For me, it works really well. Uh, it's available uh, through Apple, through the App Store. And uh, I think it's about $199. I really like it. Um, I'm able to create what I need. It works for me. You can try to find a software, a recording package that works best for you. There's so many good ones out there on the market. I'm working on some new guitar lessons 
and I created a backing track uh, inspired by Santana, kind of a Latin groove. And I did it all through Logic. And uh, I ran the guitar right into the interface, just to give you an example. And I recorded, uh, I just recorded, actually for this, I just recorded a clean guitar. And then I recorded, uh, and then I have a drum program. I use Easy Drummer. Um, they, they have some killer sounds. And I it's acoustic drums. They're not MIDI drums. Or they're, they're actually recorded from acoustic drum instruments. Um, sound really good. I really like it. And sometimes I use progressive or loops because they have a lot of loops in different timings, you know, because I write a lot like in 9 8 or in 3 4, 7 8, stuff like that. So I'll use that, but along with uh, Easy Drummer. So that's my drum, and then I uh, use the virtual instrument, an organ that I picked that actually Logic comes with a lot of different virtual instruments, and a lot of them sound really good. Um, so I use an organ, and then I put in some percussion, some sticks, a shaker, a wood block, and then I uh, took my bass guitar, plugged that into the interface, recorded some bass, and uh, mixed it all up in the soup, mixed it all together. I, uh, I have some pretty cool plugins. Actually, Logic comes with some cool plugins for reverb and EQ. And then I have a few other things I use when I master it, uh, mastering limiter and some other goodies that help, you know, put on that little secret sauce, that, that, that little magic, right, to really make it shine. And uh, it's just a basic uh, jam track that I created for my students. And uh, here, I'll let you listen to a little bit of it. I think it came out pretty good. And that track, I didn't spend tons and tons of time on it either. I kind of got it together pretty quickly. Um, once you get to know your system, you could start to create stuff very fast. Obviously, there's a learning curve at first. But the great thing about, you know, in our age of YouTube and Google is that if you get stuck with anything, you're not sure how to do it when you're using your software or how you, if something's not working right the way you hook it, just go online. Just Google search a question. And I, I do that often when I run into trouble or if I'm looking for an easy way to work around the problem or something. I'll Google it and see if other people are experiencing the same problem, right? Uh, it's a great way. A lot of people even put up YouTube videos on how to fix this or fix that. What an amazing time we live in, right? Uh, imagine like 15 years ago when you ran into problems like that. There was no internet. There was no YouTube. There was no Google. What did you used to do? Be frustrated. <laughs> School of hard knocks, right? And uh, try to call up a tech line or something or... Or try to figure it out on your own after painless hours and hours, right? Now it's 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 much more streamlined, quicker, more efficient, and and thank goodness because I use it a lot. Because <laughs> uh, we all run into you know those computers are glitchy, right? They're buggy. There's you're gonna run into problems. They lock up. So that's a pretty simple way of hooking up the components in your digital audio workstation and to start your your home recording creative process, right? Um, you have those five pieces of the system and you're hooking them together with balanced cables and like I always say you know buy the best equipment that you can afford you want it to sound really good get a good pair of monitors uh, probably one of the most important pieces of the puzzle you know the, the the monitor is so important because you want one designed for this process that has a flat frequency response they're not coloring their sound you're getting a true representation of the music that you're creating. Ask yourself what you want to do musically. That's going to drive a lot of your decisions for the different pieces of your workstation that you're going to be purchasing. And as always, have fun. You know, it's all about the fun. You know what I always say, if it's not fun, why do it, right? Take advantage of the technology that's out today um, for recording and guitar playing, the plugins that they're making today and some of the sounds uh, the virtual instruments are just just amazing. Um, so if you're not taking advantage of this, you're really missing out. You know, it's it's really a lot of fun, and it really makes the creative process something that's a lot more streamlined that you can do at home and and uh, create some awesome sounds. Be sure to watch part one of this lesson if you want me to get into any one of these components in more detail, or if you want to learn anything else about this process or about what plugins that I like, or a little bit more about Logic. Um, or, uh, you know, put a comment 
below. Let me know what you want to talk about in these Guitar Gab sessions or what you want to learn about. I'll read it, and, um, and that's where I pick my content from. So this is about you, the good people, and how we can help you along in your guitar journey. I'm David Taub. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. All right. It's a journey and enjoy that journey and enjoy the process. If you get a second, please click on that subscribe button and subscribe to our channel here. Rock on good people. We'll let you know when we have more stuff coming out and go to our website, nextlevelguitar.com. It's a full on structured guitar curriculum for beginner, intermediate, advanced players. It has over 1500 lessons and growing all genres of music. And there's a three day free pass on the homepage. So we don't ask for a credit card or anything. You can just click start the free trial, give the site a good test drive. I've taught hundreds of thousands of students all over the world through that website, right? And um, last thing, if you want me to send you some more stuff, uh, free video lessons and eBooks coinciding all for free, click on that link in the YouTube description box, follow the screen and I will totally hook you up. Free video lessons, uh, free eBooks. I put out stuff all the time. You'll be a special member and then in the inner circle. Um, when I come out with new products, you'll get first dibs at, uh, at discounted prices. So please do that. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all your kind words and insights and feedback and comments and support. Um, I have some other links if you want to click them. Go to our Facebook page and all that other good stuff, okay? Uh, have a great time with your getting started with your digital audio workstations, computer-based recording. I wish you the best of luck recording the best sounds possible. I'm David Taub. Take care and keep on rocking.